Hi, I'm Bob Jonathan. I'm one of the librarians here at UCLA. I'm here to talk about Web of Science. Web of Science is a database that has a number of highly specialized tools that allow you to find information in different ways than you might be accustomed to finding information when using a standard journal article database. Many of these specialized tools rely on the use of citations or references within each article or book that they cite in Web of Science. In practical terms, what it looks like is, is if you have a journal article that has great content that you really like, you'll often look to its citations to find new articles and to find out more information about that topic. Because Web of Science has all sorts of citations from all of the things that it indexes, you can actually use the article you're reading and look at things that are newer than it using citations from those newer items, right? So it's the inverse of what we typically do. People often call this the scholarly conversation, seeing how an idea changes from the past through to the present. And what's great is that if you have an article that's a little out of date, you can find brand new things that um, are still on your topic. So. What we'll talk about today, some of the specialty tools we'll talk about, because we can't talk about everything, are cited reference searching, which is just what I demonstrated there, highly cited papers filter. This is fantastic if you're going to be doing literature reviews, and using the journal impact factor. So we'll get started with cited reference searching. So it's not the same thing as doing a normal search where you're looking for a topic. What we're doing is we're looking for a specific citation. So I've got a citation listed out here. I've put some different uh, elements of that citation. It's from the year 2011, et cetera, into the search boxes. And then I click search. Here we have, they found nine things that match my search. There's actually one that is the real deal. So I'm gonna click that box. And this is from 2011, you can see that. It's got the DOI. We'll scroll back up and click see result. So now here are the 400 citing articles that are newer than my 2011 article, All right? So we can take a look and see, this is sorted by newest first. This is the newest article that's using that particular piece of research. And I can scroll through and see if there's anything that's uh, really calling to me. And I can also not only look at the individual pieces of literature, I can analyze these results and see how this literature is being used overall. So by clicking analyze results, it's going to tell me that within the web of science categories, they're listing the number of results, they're listing 10. Here are some popular categories. So uh, general internal medicine, uh, environmental occupational health, pediatrics, immunology. I can also change this category to say, let's look at affiliations. So where are, is this information coming from? The University of Oxford, McMaster University, uh, University of California system. And I can take a look at those records. Let's say University of California system. Here are the nine records in those 400 results from the UC system. So it's just an incredibly powerful tool to use if you want to, um, cite uh, 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 newer things from what you were using before. So now we're gonna take a look at the highly cited papers filter. And the way to use this, you can use this actually within um, what we were looking at from a cited reference search, but you can also use it if you're just running a gen general search. So we're just looking for this general, these general topics um, COVID-19 and postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. I'll hit search. We're getting new results. And we have 326 results from the web of science. And I wanna look at the highly cited papers. The reason I wanna look at this, so I'll click this box and hit refine. The reason I wanna look at this is because these are papers that are being cited very heavily. Um, and that indicates that they're important to that scholarly conversation. If I'm writing a literature review, 
that means I'll be able to more easily identify the areas of research that are being talked about. So my lit review, I can just sort of get into those areas more quickly, as opposed to reading 300 things, I can take a look at these uh, 21 results. But that's using the highly cited papers. And you can see there are other very cool filters that are happening here, and we just don't have time to look at all of them. So the next thing I want to talk about is using journal impact factor in the web of science. Now, impact factor is a little mystery, mysterious, um, we'll, but I, to take that mystery out, I want to look at a couple of things. The impact factor number, the category that it's in, and the category rank. I do want to stress that impact factor does not mean quality. It just means how often something, a journal, is cited. So it can be cited for bad things as well as good, but it's, it, so it doesn't mean quality. Oftentimes it's an inferred quality, right? So you can infer that there's quality in that, in a highly ranked thing. So to get to impact factor, I go to the upper right-hand side and click product and I click journal citation report. And that brings me to journal impact factor. If I look at the impact factor for the journal, The Lancet, this is in the category of general and internal medicine. So that's its journal category. If I scroll down, I can see that its impact factor, sorry, I missed it, I've scrolled too far, is 168.9. Is that good or bad? Well, generally speaking, it's high. It's a high number. And the, the thing that's more important, in my op opinion, is the ranking, the journal ranking. So this is ranked number one out of 169 journals in general and internal medicine. That means it's obviously the most highly ranked and it's the most highly cited. So that does imply quality, right? Because everyone is citing this journal. So let's take a look at a different journal Journal of Bone and Joint Surgery, the American volume. This has got two categories, orthopedics and surgery. Its impact factor is 5.3, significantly smaller than the 168 for the Lancet. Does that mean that this is a lower quality journal? My answer is no. The actual number doesn't mean anything. What I wanna scroll down to is its ranking. And its ranking is fifth in the category of orthopedics and 17th in the category of surgery. So it's in the first quartile of each of those categories, meaning this is still a high quality journal. It just doesn't have the broad exposure of something like Lancet. So I hope that that helps illuminate some of the interesting um, elements of Web of Science. And if you've got questions, please feel free to ask any of us at the UCLA libraries. Thanks so much.